What's up, Pee Wee homies? I want to show you guys a build I've been working on lately. This is a Lightning Arrow Magic Find character that is using some Mana Forged Arrows tech alongside something I haven't seen yet, which is using Cast On Crit with Chain attached to Mana Forged Arrows to automate additional targets for you to chain projectiles off of. Now, how do we do this? We use Mana Forged Arrows with Frenzy, which we're using anyway to generate Frenzy charges and have additional arrows flying around for more hits. All the tech you've seen before, but you can actually use cast on crit so that the bow skill that is being triggered by mana forged arrows can also trigger a spell with cast on crit, and then we can trigger automatic tornado and hydrospheres to provide additional targets for us to chain projectiles off of. And then we take the chain ascendancy on Deadeye as well as we're using a Gloom Fang to get another chain, which I'm not sure is necessary, but it does seem to help. Amulet slot is kind of important on a Magic Fine character, so I might drop it because I don't think it's really necessary for damage. But I will say this takes our 3 million damage with all my buffs up and stuff in POB, and it really makes it feel more like 10, maybe even 15 million damage. It's doing a lot more damage with this chain tech. That's the tech we're using here in this specific setup. As you can see the gameplay, you're going to notice some of these bosses just get absolutely melted. Also with this setup, the more targets that are around, the more damage you're going to be doing for all the chains to chain off of each other. So it's really good for a mapper, magic find style character. And then we're able to get the single target up there to make killing the bosses and those tankier monsters in your map really nice by getting the free chaining off of terrain and we also get chained off of terrain with the dead eye ascendancy nodes instead of taking far shot which i think is a lot better especially in this situation with the tech we're using we'll take a look at the character here at the end this is kind of a brief video i'm still kind of testing stuff out with this build kind of a pseudo quick build guide here all right guys so let's take a look at the gear we're working with here i'm going to show you guys what we have set up right now we're using tanu ahi gloves which is something i might change out our res is pretty low right now we're doing magic vine with eater altars and stuff you kind of want a lot of extra res so you can take altars that reduce your res but give you quant so we might get rid of these the adrenaline is really nice it's very comparable to using calm spirits obviously using berserk gem with all that rage is really really strong but these are pretty comparable to the amount of power you get mainly from the movement speed i like from them because we get adrenaline we get onslaught we get rampage from the belt here we have onslaught on kill from uh the nodes on the tree so we're very very zoomy without a headhunter or a mage blood so it's a very fast build which is another thing you want for just an efficient mapping character that's doing something like magic find these venter gam venter's gambles were about five divines each they aren't super crazy but they're they're pretty nice ones so those are the that's the main cost in the build really is the venter's gambles the hiri's ire and then the the bow a lot of the other things are maybe a divine in cost i crafted this one myself it's pretty good quiver we need a lot of res on the quiver so i kind of crafted this with some essences i actually slammed on the life roll which was really nice so i'm not sure how much this would cost you because i crafted myself but um it's a pretty good quiver i don't think it'd be crazy expensive most of the time people are looking for more offensive quivers but then we have Gloom Fang with Vengeance Cascade Anointment. Obviously, the Vengeance Cascade Anointment is mandatory for the build, and I'm not sure the Gloom Fang is. I was just using a Biscos Collar because I've thrown this build together, and I wasn't sure I wanted to go out and buy one of the um, Eyes of the Great Wolf Quant amulets yet on it. I probably will do that eventually. I'm not sure we need the extra chain on the Gloom Fang. That's really all we're using it for. The Projectiles that have chained gain 22% of non-chaos as extra chaos is nice, and this is super low rolled. Actually, I didn't even check this. I kind of just grabbed whatever was on the market. Yeah, this is super low rolled. It's got like, it's almost like the worst rolls you can get because the projectile speed is really low. We're losing <laughs> the most life we can lose with attacks, and we're losing almost, uh, yeah, as much life as we can lose with spells. So this is a really, really bad Gloom Fang, but you get much better if you're going to use Gloom Fang. I do think the additional chain helps the single target quite a lot, but I'm not sure you really need it for a magic find character. So I may drop it, I may not. We, we are getting plus one chain from the ascendancy point already, and let me talk about that for a second on the belt. Now, this whole idea kind of came about because I was testing out whether far shot or chain felt better on lightning arrow, because I kind of was deciding whether or not I wanted to put point blank in the build, which in my opinion is the better thing to do. I Instead of using far shot, I was finding out that 
Yes, while the extra damage on far shot is really nice, and especially if you're using Barrage, I'm not using Barrage, so I don't really care about that line on the Ascendancy point here. And far shot, yeah, it's good for killing things far away, but usually we're killing everything far away anyway. And it's the monsters that get close to us are the ones we want more damage on. So that's why I felt like point blank was the better option. You can use both and you end up with like a nice medium range DPS uh, is really good. But because we're doing the chain tech now, just taking the chain felt so much better with the tornado and hydro sphere setup. Let me go into that for a second. So here is our cast on crit setup with uh, mana forged arrows now a few things you need to set this up with mana you can use a life tap for this and you can drop divergent inspiration i have a life tap set up here for ensnaring arrow which i would recommend because it's really hard to get the ensnaring arrow mana cost down enough especially because we're not using minus mana cost rings because we're magic find with venter's gambles I have to use a life tap here, and it still works perfectly fine. It still triggers it. You can use a life tap to set it up. You just miss out on the benefits of essentially the more damage multiplier that Mana Forged Arrows gives you. But we're really using these setups to get quality of life and utility rather than getting damage, so we don't really care about that. But you can set up a life tap here if you want. Instead of inspiration, if you're struggling to get your mana cost correct, you really need a divergent inspiration with that reduced mana cost of skills, and then a helmet with uh, I think that's grand level reduced a mana cost as well. So that's the basic tech we're using. And let me just go into the other things. We're using Frenzy as our main bow skill here that's triggered by Mana Forged Arrows to generate Frenzy charges. That's really the only thing we're using it for. And then it also triggers Hydrosphere and Tornado from the cast on crit. And then the other thing to go over is our other link here. We use Ensnaring Arrow with another Mana Forged Arrows support. This one's on life tap and we get power charge generation because this one gives power charge on crit support. So that's how we're getting power charges and frenzy charges with tornado and hydrosphere all from mana forged arrow for our chain tech to work. Let me talk about the bow for a second. I crafted this bow myself. This is worth I think about 20 divines last time I checked. I really just have two pretty good notables on here. That's all I really wanted. I wanted just bare minimum like a big attack speed and then a big flat elemental damage point. So we got both of those here on the bow, and then I just put them on a fractured T2 fire base, and then Essence spammed. I actually slammed on the lightning damage after hitting additional arrow with an open prefix. Then we did an Ashling, and then we crafted on attack speed. So it's not that hard to craft. It's probably probably took me about five divines and a whole bunch of time doing crucible trees to craft it. I probably will make a guide on how to do these bows next. Maybe it's my next little crafting video show you guys how I crafted this bow. If you want to play this build, if you don't want to spend 20 divines to buy a bow like this, you can definitely craft it for cheaper. It's just going to take you a little bit of time to set up the right crucible tree on a good fracture base like this. Then you essence spam, then you do an ashling, and then it's pretty much done. That's all the gear there. Another thing we're using is really just for a little bit more movement speed, and I guess it gives a little bit more quality life on some of the flasks, is Nature's Boon. We're stealing that from Pathfinder. There's probably better jewels you could use, but I really want move speed on this because we aren't using a headhunter. We're not using mage blood. We're magic fine, so we have to have gold worm boots. So movement speed is really key for me. And also because of Mana Forged Arrow, we aren't using any blink skills like Frost Blink or Flame Dash. So I really wanted a whole lot of move speed on build. So I'm using these basically just to get more movement speed on our Crooksilver Flask and our movement speed that we're getting here from our amethyst flask as well and we don't really need a crit chance the reduced effect of curses is nice the additional evasion is nice a little bit of additional chaos res is also nice but really it's mostly just for move speed so you could change those out for more damage if you want and one thing that really seems to help for survivability i've actually seemed to spec out of it here but i need to put this back in i'm level 97 so i still have three levels to go to get more points but i would definitely continue to take this leech here with instant leech I forget what I took out for this. I was messing around with some other things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to spec back into that because that is very helpful for keeping you alive. Uh, you can take a couple hits. We have 100% spell suppression on the build with Hiri's Ire and basically just this suppressed node. So we can take big hits. Our evasion rating is something like with our J Flask up. Where is it? We're at 30,000 evasion rating. So we don't get hit that often. And when we do, we're able to suppress it, and we have a Mortal Call set up as well. So we don't get one shot, but if you take two big hits like back to back, yeah, you might just get, you might go splat. It's not a super tanky build, but having your life be filled up to full with that instant leech 
is really, really strong. Like I said, I don't have it allocated here, but I'm definitely going to take a point out and get it. I just don't remember exactly what point I moved around here. No, I think it was the pierce, actually. I need to take this pierce out. That's another thing to talk about real quickly is I don't think you need pierce, and I am not the most knowledgeable, actually, on how chain and pierce and fork and all that work because I don't play a whole lot of build, bow builds. So if anybody has any suggestions on ideas of ways to improve this, maybe you can use pierce and chain at the same time. That's kind of what I was testing out here to see how it felt. Honestly, it didn't really feel much different with the pierce in or without it in, so I'm taking it out. I'm going to go back over to the leech. But yeah, maybe somebody else can give some more insight on how that works and maybe ways to take this a step further. It's because I'm still playing with, I'm still experimenting, and I'm definitely open to suggestions because it's definitely some really cool tech I think I've come across here and looking for ways to make it even better so that more people can play it and more people can have a good time with it. So all right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll have another build guide video coming out probably for this and a more complete version pretty soon. But I was really excited about this. I thought it was a really cool thing to do and um yeah it's a way to just take a magic find character and really scale up the damage really nicely to get even more damage and be able to you know use these magic find pieces that we use right so all right guys that's gonna do it and thanks for watching